Hi everybody, welcome to this demonstration of Mare Python. Now, Python is the major new feature for Mare version 1.2, so I'm just going to show you some bits and pieces that you can do with the Python bindings that we've added. Now, I'm not going to focus really on the, the functionality of Mare itself, or the things that you can do with, with Python by itself, because I imagine you've probably seen both of those separately. So I'm just going to show you what we've added specifically for Mare. Now, um, okay, Mare module. Uh, Python Qt module. The uh, Mari module is just where we have most of our bindings to do stuff with Mari. The Python Qt module is this is a, it's a bit like PyQt actually for those of you who've worked with that. It's uh, Python bindings for the Qt libraries, and um, so that's just graphic user and interface stuff, which is um, actually actually turns out to be very useful. I'll we'll show you a little bit of that later on. But um, for now, let's just uh, run some functions and see. actually maybe I'll show you. Inside the Mari module, there's a whole bunch of different things you can work with, generally manage your objects. Inside Mari.projects, for example, a bunch of functions you can call on projects. So we're just going to get Mari.projects.list. Now, you can see from here, this has just got a, this has got a fish, a cube, and well, some pretty straightforward stuff that's just showing you what we have now. But you can also grab these objects and get some more information on them, like um, uh, like last save times, UUIDs, all these sorts of things. Now, if I want to open the cube, for example, here we go. I could also, if I wanted, just uh, grab one of those info objects again, call open on it, but um, I just sorry that was like less typing, so I did it that way. Now, Mario.geo.current. This gives you a geo entity object. These geo entities, these are the objects you see in the menu. So it's the yeah the geometry mesh that you know, you're used to working with in Mari. And um, so this just one in this project. It's called Cube Six by Six. And the stuff that we can do with that, most stuff really is actually related to geo objects. So shaders are on them, and uh, channels are on them, and, and all these sorts of things. Um, they also have metadata, visibility settings, all these sorts of things. So say we list the shaders. There you go, there's a couple of shaders. Those are the ones we've got there. And these are the channels we've got. You can see all those names over there too. And just to prove that we can actually change stuff as well. Let's do a specular channel. And we can also grab these uh, these channel objects. We can do some stuff with them, like add and remove more metadata and you know, get information about them, all sorts of stuff. And, you know, all these sorts of things. You can like block them and all those sorts of things. Um, okay, so I don't know if you noticed that changing, but it did. Anyway, that's just a bit of a quick example of some of the bindings that we've got there and some things that you can do. And um, now I'm going to move on to menus. Now, menus. Everybody likes creating their own custom menus to do stuff, and the way we do that, it's with cr creating actions first. It should be actions.create, sorry. Just a quick testing script there. So this is an action that will run a Python script for you. So, then, you can add this action to the menu. Now, main window is just the set of menus that we're adding it to, and new is just the name of the menu that we're going to create. So, here we go. New menu, function called high, item called high. And as you can see, that works just fine. Now, also, if you decide that for some reason you're particularly keen on saying high at a moment's notice, here's a shortcut. Here we go. Had to go away. Now, one of the quite useful things we have is uh, the signals and slot system from Qt. We use this for basically for callbacks, so I won't worry about explaining too much about that. Qt does a very a much better job at explaining than than I would do, I'm sure. But basically, signals are your events, and your slots are the callback functions that are called by when the events happen. So, say if we want to clean up something when we're closing a project 
just to uh, demonstrate the principle. Got a cleanup function, and we just connect that together by simply function connect. Which, uh, connect that to this particular signal about to close project. Seems fairly obvious what that's going to do. So we can clip, connect that to our cleanup function. And if we just close that through whatever method, it calls our cleanup function, as you can see. Okay, so other things that are good to do, we can create pallets. Um, pallets are these things here, these uh, floating docking widgets you can move around the place and you know all sorts of stuff with. And just put that back there. And you can create these in the RS Pallets Manager. There you go, show that one. Yeah, we probably shouldn't have shown it just yet because it doesn't really do anything much interesting. But um, there it is. And so we can make this do some more interesting stuff by using Python Qt. Now, um, as I mentioned, this gives you a whole lot of uh, GUI tools that you can work with. And what we're going to do now is use the Python Qt GUI module, which incidentally is got all these cute bindings in here. And I'm just making it slightly shorter to type. So if we want to create a widget, then we go say set this is the body widget of the palette. It's just one of those special things you do. Uh, now we create a vertical box layout. Yeah. And we set that layout for this widget. There we go. You can see it's put in a, a layout with a little bit of stretchiness in there. So then we can do stuff like adding things, testing label. Um, there's a text edit control. And we can uh, um, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go. Let me add our push button. So that push button doesn't really do anything much of interest at the moment. So what we're going to do is because you didn't see it in anywhere near enough hello world functions before, I'm sure. Here we go, another high, and we're going to connect that, connect that to the clicked slot. Sorry, the clicked signal on the push button. So now when we click that, hooray. Okay. So, this is just some of the th things that you can do in Mario Python. And um, hopefully it's giving you a bit of an idea of what sort of stuff that is around. And just one more thing, finally. we got our custom help system here. So if you just go help by itself and bring up the contents page, which is just a, a quick introduction, some things about how to get started. Um, we have documentation for all the classes and such that we're exposing, exposing here, so you can see there's lots of stuff. There's quite a few examples as well, and in the examples, a lot of them will have source code too. So, uh, also, if you want to call something like a complicated function, like mario.projects.create, for example, that's got quite a lot of parameters, and um, yeah, can be a bit confusing at times, but yeah, your help will just go straight to it. You can also do it on uh, you know, cute bindings and stuff. So there you go. You come by box. And you can also do it on built-in libraries. There's the OS module. Or like a working directory or something like that. Anyway. Hopefully that's been useful to you and given you a bit of an idea of what sort of stuff we've added to Mario Python now. And um, yeah, hopefully everybody will find it good. And uh, cool. Thanks for watching, everybody.